Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yori Folaring. Welcome to our midweek edition of the program. I don't normally say that. I don't say the beginning of the week. I don't say the end of the week. I don't, well, maybe TGIF. Uh, but this midweek is because um, actually I thought that today we might talk a bit about ourselves when we get the opportunity now and again. And so midweek was as good an excuse as any if you get my meaning. You'll understand in a moment. Now, my guest this morning, let me start off. Um, my guest this morning is uh, Kogunan Sakoto. Now, that's his chieftaincy title. He's also known as uh, Danladi Nasir Bako, officer of the Order of the Niger. And by now, quite a lot of people would have begun to say, oh, that's the former DG of the Nigerian Broadcasting Commission. Yes, you would be right. In fact, second DG after the pioneer DG, uh, Dr. Tom uh, Adaba. Now I think, I think of blessed memory. Um, Dan Ladi, I'm so delighted to have you on the program. There's a lot more where that came from in terms of what the man has achieved. But first of all, I have to pause to say, good morning, my brother. It's been ages. Yes, Yori, I am <laughs> delighted to be here. I feel very good. Um, I've always looked forward to this. Um, that's very rare mm -hmm. um, for me to be on the side of At being this side of it. now. <laughs> and I think it's only Yori for learning that would do this, get to interview me because I was doing the interviewing exactly. of all such big people in the past and Indeed. small people. You know, and let me interrupt you there if I may. Sorry for doing that, Dan Ladi, because what you said in there, uh, being on that side of the uh, of the divide in the studio. Um, this goes back, and I, I'm so delighted to be able to say this, that well, sitting in front of me here is the granddaddy of talk shows on television in Nigeria. In fact, Danladi, you pioneered the first uh, talk show on television, breakfast talk show, the way that it is now known. Yeah. Uh, many people might not know that it all originated from Morning Ride on NTA back in the day. Now, Danladi, you started your broadcasting in your, you know, beloved Sokoto State, Rima Radio, broadcasting in Hausa and English. That's before going on to university to study English. But tell me, uh, coming back from university, uh, how was the link up that you came and you now came to NT and you started something that wasn't there before? Thank you. Um, even during the days when I was transiting from Rima Radio, uh, Radio Nigeria Kaduna briefly, then School of Basic Studies, Amadebelo University, then the first three years of my mm. degree. Mm -hmm. Every vacation, okay. I had the privilege of, sometimes, most of the time, going abroad, watch a lot of TV shows, okay. Michael Aspel, uh, uh, everybody. <laughs> so you Michael fell in love. I, 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 I saw <laughs> TV as it should be. So when my colleagues were just, you know, learning the ropes, mm -hmm. I had already been honed in a way um, by, you know, Michael Aspel, Imon Andrews, all the shows, TVAM, and I saw that there was a need for us to be able to establish something that was going to capture the imagination. I remember those days, 85, 86, NTA in the mornings were transmitting documentaries That's and right. earthworms and tomatoes <laughs> and all sorts <laughs> yeah, of yeah, things yeah, yeah, and yeah. grasshoppers. Yeah. You know, there was no life. And I felt that we needed to seize that morning belt and I felt that there was a need to be able to capture the imagination of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said to myself, well, let's go. Fortunately, 85, 86, NTA had a challenge. The management saw that LTV under Jack and Day had been doing marathon TV those days during 83 elections right up to. And NTA too was being set up to try to challenge LTV. Now, they didn't know what to do with L NTA too. So, the management said, Alaji Kiri Ahmed, late Alaji Kiri Ahmed, all the DG, everybody mm -hmm. said, and that they go and sit down and decide what is the program format we should use for NTA2. So I came up with members of the committee, Cordelia AK, Engineer Debumi, Frank Oko, five of us, mm -hmm. sat down, designed this station that was NTA2, just 30 people, transmit 24 hours, hit the intelligentsia, up middle, upper middle class, hit them, get things that, you know, you know as, and, against, uh, as against Channel 10, mm -hmm. that was going to be uh, in Hausa, Igbo, Yoruba, English. And, and much more formal. And much more formal. So NTA2 was supposed to be liberal, and uh, entertaining. And catering to entertainment, catering, mostly. Yes, but packaging news in such a consumable fashion that was going to make it, you know, easily 
absorbed into your system. So you were going to relax on a Saturday morning and pick up so much information. And I said to myself, I would create a program that after two, three hours of your morning belt, you finished watching, you would have been briefed about everything around the country. You would have been entertained, educated, and informed. And Indeed. so it carried most of all those things at that time. And so you were so lucky to have had that opportunity and that backing uh, to, to, to be able to actualize this idea. Very key, very key. Uh, that, that, that's key. You yeah. had people behind you who had said, go and do it, we're going to back you. Although, although I had a major challenge because not all of them were in consonance with this. Uh, a few members of management said, the problem, we like this idea, the problem was going to be that if you take a live program, and you're going to use a telephone, we have a problem because, mm -hmm. oh, people, viewers can call and abuse Babangida. <laughs> they can call and abuse government. Exactly. And I said, that was the fear then. Yes, the fear was, there was no live program apart from news. Mm. No live, every other thing, Sunday show, everything was recorded. I was the first to do a live show. Exactly. And I took the risk. Mm. And I, in fact, I signed, I had to agree to an agreement that if anybody abused government, mm -hmm either on phone or any of my live guests. Remember you were dealing with Tai Solari, Alao Akabashon, Wale Shoyinka. And, and you didn't know how people were going Fela. to, how the viewers were going to handle the freedom. Yes, you did, the freedom. You didn't know how they were going to handle it. But so you took that risk. I took that risk and I managed it well and bingo became and huge. Such that today, now everybody does a phone-in program. In fact, I don't think anybody will allow itself not to do a, a phone-in program. Absolutely. And the viewers have come to, the game has been upped in that recent. Yes, in and that, I think in that they have learned a little discipline as well. Mm -hmm. the, at the earlier stages, you could have one or two Randy callers, yeah, people yeah, yeah, who yeah, were yeah, crazy, yeah, yeah, erratic, yeah, 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 eccentric, yeah, yeah. But, but that's to be for understood. The more, for the better part. But for the better part, people, people have learned to understand that there's some cutsy, there's mm -hmm. some discipline mm -hmm. about calling on air, on TV. Mm -hmm. In fact, in fact, most of them these days, they will say, God bless Nigeria. So <laughs> exactly. <I ask> <laughs> now, you went in there alone because of feature. Another, another nationally known name would be Yinka Craig. True. There's so many of them that True. were back in that era. True. But let me just take Yinka Craig because yeah. he was sports. And yeah. You were also sports. You were many things, Dan Laddie. Absolutely. You were presenter. You were producer. You were director. You, know? <laughs> you were interested in sports. You were in the news. Now, Yinka Craig is another iconic name. In, in Nigerian broadcasting. You were there together. In fact, it became, people thought that it was a Yinka Dan Ladi show. We, we since First Tech 77, I was second year university in ABU. I came for First Tech. We sat down, brainstormed with Yinka after NT was formed. NT was formed in 1977. All the stations gathered and appointed Maduka, government mm. appointed Maduka, Vincent Maduka to be mm. director general. And I met Yinka Craig and we started during First Tech. We, we all had the same, I discovered that we had the same vision of trying to create some newness. There were so many things that were stale about NTA. So we wanted to create newness. So at that same time, we'd sit down and brainstorm. And when I brought the idea of Morning Ride, I said, Yinka, just look at this for me. And Yinka loved the whole idea. In fact, he encouraged me, Yinka, about <laughs> Six, eight years older, no, about nine years older than me. That's right. But That's right. He, he related to me like my, mm. like a twin. Mm. And I would, he would sit with me in the studio somewhere behind the cameras and he would tell me the things he thought. He gave me inputs at every point. There you go. I also gave him inputs on mm -hmm. Newsline. I would tell him some. Because Inka was on, people will remember the more, the more, shall we say, the more, I don't want to use it, the, the older listeners, they will remember these programs. Yes. Newsline, yes. you know, Morning Ride. Absolutely. The Newsline, remember, that I think Franco Lise yes, ultimately later, took it over much later, later on. Much, much, much later. later on. But the key and the essence and the flavor, the, in, the incredible creativity came mm -hmm. from Yinka. There you go. Of Newsline. There you and go. because you, you were allowed at that time, I remember that we wanted to do more. But the laws of NTA <laughs> prevented us from owning copyright. As I speak with you, I don't own copyright of Morning Ride because <laughs> the laws say that everybody, everything you create while in NTA belongs to, belongs to NTA. NTA. And I so think we, everybody has inherited that. That's we the way were, all the stations are. We were discouraged from creating new programs. There were new programs we wanted to do that were going to even take over or challenge, you know, but we felt that, okay, we were not going to be mm -hmm. encouraged. So somewhere along the line, I think somebody's got to give some freedom. If I went as an outside, outside uh, as an independent producer and I brought an idea, I would 
make my money. Yeah. Yeah. But as an NTA staff, I yeah. just get peanuts yeah, 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 and yeah, go yeah. home. Uh, I, think and th I remember the, uh, the village master, the new village master, true. I think they went and inserted a line created by Shegun Olushola, and that was about it, I'm sure. Absolutely. You know. Okay, that, that, that's, th thank you for that memory uh, lane aspect to it. Now, you started it all, yeah. you and your colleagues back in the day, you started it all, and now everybody's doing it yeah. so uh, you must that must give you a sense of satisfaction that it was an idea we didn't know what its fate would be and uh, actually we were ready but we didn't know we were too scared it took sure. someone uh, to take the plunge what do you think of the uh, evolution of the genre now let me say with all modesty that in Ghana they still call their own edition morning ride on <laughs> TV3 okay in South Africa they call it morning live but it's the same thing, mm -hmm. same belt, mm -hmm. early morning, mm -hmm. breakfast show, mm -hmm. same format, same content, sports, newspapers, a little entertainment, review of books, mm -hmm. re meet some new, yeah, new yeah. stars, all of that. I feel good that, as I said to my, you know, mentees, some of the fellows I was mentoring last week, I said to them, Almighty God did not charge me for my brain. <laughs> he did not give me an invoice or a bill that there are three brains here. There's a stupid brain, there is an <laughs> average brain, there is a good brain. Pick one and pay for it before you go to the world. He didn't give me that. He didn't give me a bill. He gave me free of charge. So the things that I do, I do a lot of things gratis. Okay. In fact, I have a problem. I just do things gratis okay. for people. Mm. But because I love you, 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 you it. You got to pass it on. You got to pass it on. got to pass it on. My but, joy is that people are doing those things. Now, some of the occasions you've had People not doing them the way they really can. They don't optimize. No, not to the best of Yes, uh, they the don't concepts, optimize the concept potential. potential. But so far, so good. I think relatively, yes. And beyond just doing entertainment and information and education, the element of allowing the viewer to call in mm -hmm. has li liberalized democracy. It has liberalized the input of the viewer. So we're not just doing what radio people in... Yoruba language, they used to say radio. What do they call Yoruba? That radio is one way talk. Uh -huh, nobody replies yes, you. It will talk, it won't, no, there will be no reply. No, that is. In today's world, people reply you, people call in, people give you feedback on Twitter, on Facebook, on telephones. On, so that for me encourages democracy. Indeed. And whether you like it or not, the inputs from the people on democratic issues has raised the profile of our democratic thinking and thought process, especially in today, in Indeed. today's politics. And when you, 10, 20 years ago, if you told people, anybody in government, that the masses know about these things like this, they would say it's a lie. Mm -hmm. Now, a president will be sitting in his house, he'll be hearing radio, and people are telling him what they it's normally would not say exactly. on radio. Exactly. A governor will be sitting down and somebody will be saying that this governor has not done X, Y, Z. <laughs> and he's amazed that sometimes he asks himself, I wish this was a military regime. Maybe we would have just shut <laughs> out these guys. Because you hear direct feedback. Uh, a bit like, uh, although it's totally different, like uh, President Trump tweeting directly to the, to the electorate. Yeah. Uh, this is infuriated, as you know, news organizations yeah. around the world. But, but now, now Cross-fertilization. Yes, now, this is the professional uh, practical uh, presenter, but also as a technocrat, yeah. you, you, you had the uh, singular honor to rise to the apex of your career when you actually were appointed as the second DG, I said it in my intro, second director general after Dr. Tom Adaba. Uh, so here was the young man who started out you know, being a presenter, he had all this love for production, for directing, uh, he, he, he just was an adventurer, a mental adventurer. Now he's actually become um, the DG of the place and is now responsible for uh, the quality standards of television in Nigeria. How did that feel? Challenging, exciting, fulfilling, and uh, rewarding. Um, I must thank President Obasanjo for By having the way, confidence some time ago, me. that was 1999. Yes, 1999. No, that's when you were the DG. Yeah, I was 41, but President Obasanjo had absolute confidence in me. Before then, I had been invited by him to Africa Leadership Forum in Ota, February 89. I was in course number four mm -hmm. with Victor Ogundikbe and Ray Ekbu okay. and Abu Bak, late Abu Bakam, Professor Abu Bakar okay. So 15 of us were in course number four, Africa Leadership Forum. So he had seen certain Something. traits. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it came to me becoming Director General, he just said to me that I'm going to send you to, and I said to him, 
choose the most challenging place for me. And he said, okay, NBC. And he signed, oh, oh. I continue to thank President Abbasanjo for giving me that privilege mm -hmm. and that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now, I was faced <coughs> with a challenge where certain stations were totally, totally off key. I mean, they did things without, they thought that there shouldn't be regulation. They thought that they could do whatever. You saw all kinds of manner of videos, musicals, some discussions that were totally out of, totally unethical. Okay. And I needed to sanitize the place. I also needed to bring out the whole frequencies that we could get from the ITU to open the, broad, the bandwidth for FM stations. And by 1999, we, I think it was just, I was, remember I was zonal director in NBC before I became DG. Mm. So it was just Ray Power in 1994, that was the FM station, and Radio Nigeria 2 Lagos, Sunshine Station. That was, so I needed to expand the scope and now create varieties so that those upmarket stations like Cool FM, who wanted to, you know, be, yes. you know, yes, 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 and yes. the ones that wanted to go the Wazobia FM way, yes. you know, Pigeon English, yes. and the ones that were Radio Lagos, in fact, came to me, Lake Ogumbangu, and said, listen, we want to move from F a medium wave to FM, and I gave them a license to move to FM, mm -hmm. which was clearer, so they became Tiwan Tiwa. Tiwan Tiwa. You know, and so we did all of those things, and we had four or five satellite stations that wanted to come into Nigeria, and we knew that we needed to pick one. So that's how we licensed DSTV with a mandate that they must promote local content, minimum of 20%. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning mm -hmm. of Africa Magic. Mm -hmm. That was the beginning mm -hmm. of uh, Super Sport. Mm -hmm. That was the beginning of everything. And we said Africa Magic in the next five years should develop Nigerian content to the level where they are English, Igbo, House, and as many languages as you can. And in fact, there's even an app now where you can translate the language of each one of those movies directly. So it was a challenging time, Serious but, but exciting time because Absolutely. this was this was pioneering and really setting Nigeria on the trajectory that it would take in terms of uh, uh, broadcasting in the country. Perfect way to put it. E exactly, and uh, so you, that, 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 that that is an honor. And as you said, you you have uh, President Obasanjo, you know, to well at, at the time what, what, he was a military man at the time. No, right? no, 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 no. 1999. Okay. Yeah, 1999. Yeah. yeah, he had just come back. And let me just at this point before we move out of here, let me thank. TVC as a station, since we're talking now at the evolution of yes. new stations, yes. TVC has proven that deregulation is a perfect decision that was taken by government to allow private ownership of television. TVC has gone the way we wanted, the way we predicted, and the trajectory TVC has set has created a benchmark that's going to be extremely difficult for anybody. Wow. One of the challenges we had was everybody wanted to own a station. And I said, you don't need to gang gather your resources so that you can pull your resources together. But everybody wanted everybody wanted his own. Yeah. And it's in Nigerian fashion. Everybody thought he was a landlord. <laughs> everyone wanted a kingdom. And so resources were thin. Yeah. They were thin, so and, and they could It's a hugely capital-intensive business. Abs it's capital-intensive. The quality of cameras you need, the tricasters you need, the studio you need, the lights you need, the quality of microphones you need. Personnel. The personnel, transmitter, uplink and downlink. So it's not a very easy thing to do. Transponders. Mm. So I commend TVC incredibly well. And on behalf of the Sultanate of Sokoto, when the Sultan went to the U.S. in August last year, TVC was the only station that followed the Sultan everywhere. And a young lady called Tayo Ademola mm -hmm, mm -hmm. carried her camera, mm -hmm. did all the reports. I cannot thank TVC wow. enough. Wow. I was, he, she went into the wow. White House with us. Okay. She went into Institute of Peace and okay. Conflict Resolution, Wilson Center, okay. went everywhere Indeed. with the Sultan. And Indeed. the best pictures, the best reports came from that yeah. Young lady. Well, thank you very and much. Uh, uh, the young lady was Tola Ademola. Uh, yes. Uh, no, Tol not not uh, Tola Ademola. Tola Ademola. Indeed, you know. Um, okay. So this is the professional side of the man. It you see, it's like like riding a bicycle. You you never forget how. Yeah. You you see things going on. Sometimes the presenter will come back on you as a spirit. Sometimes the producer comes back on you. Sure. You can't do anything about it. But there you are <laughs> watching at home. <laughs> now, uh, Malam Danladi Nasir Bako, you left all of that professional you know uh, aspect and um you 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 stepped into the political waters 
you were very interested in politics. And um, in fact, you were commissioner. You were commissioner in your home state of yeah. Sokoto, commissioner for information, uh, 2012 to 2015. Um, so this really was the technocrat, different aspects of it. And I mentioned before that your, your political you know, persuasion is of the PDP stock. You yeah. know. Now, tell me, maybe we can move into the polity. The buzzword now is restructuring uh, and, and, and all that kind of thing. Now, restructuring means different things to different people. Some people are afraid of restructuring. Some people say it's the only thing for us to do. Uh, it would be nice to have the thoughts of a professional colleague, you know, broadcaster, who has then had political experience as well. What exactly is your take on restructuring? Before we move a little into that, let me just briefly say that I was part of the PDP states Sokoto, Rivers, Plateau, Adamawa, and Kano mm -hmm. that moved into the APC. And I was, during the days of PDP, I was chairman media and publicity for the Northwest mm -hmm. of the PDP presidential campaign. Okay. Then the APC days, I was chairman of um, uh, gubernatorial campaign, you know, 2016, I was chairman of all of those things. Mm. Now, so oh, oh, sorry. I have so moved. You, 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 you moved from PDP? Yes. Into APC yes, yes. as the a corporate decision. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. In fact, the day the State Executive Council met and decided that Sokoto State as a government and people would move into APC, as Commissioner of Information, I had to make the announcement. There you go. So I, that, that the escaped I'm sorry about that. Yes, I did that. So, you know, that puts it in perspective. Indeed. APC is in charge in Sokoto, and I was, an, and I'm still an integral part mm -hmm. of that. Um, I would be 60 in two months time, and so I consider that I'm an elder now. <laughs> go on, <laughs> you know, go so on, take I it. I consider <laughs> that I'm an elder now, so I can sit back and watch. There you go. And when you have had the privilege of interviewing Taisho Larin, yes. Professor Babs Fafungwa, Ambassador Babagana Kingibe, late Meitama Sule, you know, Wale Inka, On Morning Ride, Fela, MQ Abiola, all on Morning Ride. Your perspectives on politics are rich, but also sometimes you have to be a little definite about what you think the country needs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For me, I think we have a bigger challenge of leadership before restructuring. If we do any restructuring and the quality of leaders we pick on the street, mm -hmm. they will mess up the restructuring we're doing because we have a constitution. Many, many a times, we have to debate and argue over what is the constitutional provision. We have courts that give judgments. We don't obey those judgments sometimes. We have things people know that they're not supposed to steal, but a governor goes and steals money outrightly and nothing happens. So even if you choose today to say Biafra people should go, even within that Biafra, by the grace of God, I was senior special assistant to Jim Wobodo Chief Jim Wobodo as Minister of Youth and Sports, 95, 96, 97. And we will go to all the villages in Southeast, from Anambra, we'll go to Njikoka, Dunukofia, uh, uh, you know, we'll come down to Abia, Ebere Ikwano, we'll enter all those Aruchuku, mm -hmm. we'll go into Imo, Arondizogu, we want to all those areas. So I have an idea. People will still fight amongst themselves. <laughs> Even if you give them 10 states within that area, yes. there will still be crisis because there even that superiority complex still exists within them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Even within them. Mm -hmm. Because there are some Igbos that are not as, as equal to some other Igbos. The same thing happens with... Like when I tell people in the north, in my area, that even if you go to Yoruba land, that the Yoruba they speak in Ikere Ikiti is different from the one they speak in Okitukupa or the one they speak in Legushi or Olowogbowo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That the Yoruba it is the, the and even in Ibadan or the the the, the variants there are there. Is and there is that variation. complex. Even the kings in Yoruba land still argue who is superior. <laughs> so <laughs> Yori, there's this problem of leadership. Truly, really. And so then, unless we face and it's because of how we are, how yeah. we are structured, uh, how well it goes back to maybe the amalg amalg amalgamation of Nigeria. Because um, maybe other countries that we look to in the West don't have exactly these kind of challenges, challenges. that we have. Yeah, the, the problem of leadership being what it is, and the contestation among them. But when you now bring that 
And uh, having taken the caveat that you've just given, that, um, look, you've got to sort that out before we go into any form of uh, restructuring. True. The kind of impatience, I don't know what other word to use, that is being displayed by the youths that are now making these provocative statements. Yeah. Um, what do you make of the charge that, uh, you know, perhaps the elders that are not, as it were, reining these guys in, because we have a very, very traditional society. True. The elders tell you, enough, you are going to have to, much more so than even law. And, yeah. uh, uh, First of all, do you agree that we're both in the southeast and in the north, uh, elders have been criticized for not coming out as decisively as Nasir El Wufai, for example, who, yeah. bam, immediately said, this is absolutely not on. I'm totally in support of elders making their inputs from the word go. Um, I'm happy that even reluctantly, Ohanese realized that the trajectory that IPOP was going to go through was going to begin to say we cannot have elections in Anambra in November. And they now realize that if you don't check this movement, we're going to lose our status as elders and this young man is going to become the king. <laughs> so they are now saying that no, we don't want Biafra, we want to dialogue. We cannot stop elections in Anambra. Same for the North. I do not think anybody has a right to request anybody to vacate any part of this country. I solidly do not. I mean, for God's sake, some of us have been, if, well, if all the times I was going to Southeast, they had kidnapped me or killed me, what would you have said? They tolerated all of us. Mm -hmm. We have, I know people in Onicha, in Fege in Onicha, who were born there, Hausa people, who were born there 60 years ago. And they're there till today. They sell cows, they sell rams. I can take you to so many areas of, so many parts, Afikbo, uh, uh, I can take you We're to so parts inextricably mixed, mixed with each other. Truly. And you come to Sokuto, you will find, listen, the, 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 uh, there's a gentleman called Elias Kido in Sokoto. I grew up from two years old knowing him in front of my house. Uh, he's still there till date. He sells sportswear. Where do you ask a man like that to go? That you're giving him an ultimatum? I can give you a whole list of more than mm -hmm. 200. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are women who, in Sokoto, who, have, who were born. There's a popular street in Sokoto called Offa Road. It's across the airport. It's called Offa Road. Predominantly, you'll find you can get Amala, you can get Begiri, you can get <laughs> Ewedu, you can get Orishirishi, you can get anything. And, so, so, and, and let me tell you, surprisingly, even Hausa people go to buy a wedu <laughs> to eat there. The same way the Yoruba people have learned how to eat to and Kuka. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I come to Lagos. I'm in University of Lagos doing my MSc mass come 1980, 81. Mm. And directly across me in, in Lagos, they are selling food. They don't have to, they don't have uh, uh, and Kuka. Mm. So I am compelled to learn how to eat. <laughs> eh? <laughs> so the point is that, uh, as you are saying, leadership, you, which you identified, is Abs part of the problem. It's key. It's, it's key. And people, should, people, I, I don't know, maybe people have insecure, a security complex. Yes. Because there's too much of this thing going on. The advice, the, I, I don't know, maybe people have insecure, a security complex. Yes. Because there's too much of this thing going on. The advice, the acting president has warned that, look, don't go over the edge yeah. whereupon you're breaking the law. Um, let me put it like this. A lot of them, by my experience, I was there, I was 10 years old when the Civil War started, and I know, and I saw bombs in some cases, and I saw, and I know what it took when people were being slaughtered. The day in June 1993, when all this katakata about June 12 started, I was doing morning ride, and I invited the governor of Lagos State, Cornelio Nola to morning ride. Mm. And he said, made one statement, no country goes through two civil wars and survives. And survives. Mm. I now use that as a jingo. Yes. No, he was in his fatigue, military, mm. as governor of mm. Lagos, they were sitting the same mm. way. Mm. No country goes through two civil wars. And survives. 80% of those who are jumping on the streets in Southeast, they have never seen a bomb. Throw a grenade, they will take cover. Let me take a break at this stage. Uh, <laughs> we'll take a break and then this intriguing conversation, uh, when we come back, of course, you know, that's your time now. You can join the conversation by calling in. Stay with us, please.
Welcome back. Uh, continuing our conversation with uh, Kogono Sakoto Danladi Nasir Bako OON, former di Director General of the Nigerian Broadcasting Commission. Uh, you can go on to so many formers. I mean, also former commissioner, um, you know, in Bauchi State. Uh, Sokoto State. Uh, uh, sorry, I beg your pardon. In Sokoto State, uh, he's, uh, he's very, very close to this sultanate. The Sokoto, he quickly said, ah, in Sokoto, Sokoto. <laughs> 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 Indeed. Uh, thank you for being on the show, my brother. Thank you. Uh, now, the, the, um, the other thing, of course, is that um, we, we, we uh, television in Nigeria is what it is. Radio, when we, when we were on here, there's also a radio part that I'm, you're interested in. Uh, Jones Wilson walked in, well, you know, and walked in the set, and uh, you guys were just backslapping each other again. You see, these are part of the whole tribe, shall we say, sure. of communication, both on radio and television back in the day. And some of the soldiers are still up there. They're still, you know, like Citizen Jones is an example of that, still fighting. Once upon a time, as far back as 1973, I would tune my radio. Well, as far back as 1963, I would wake up at night and listen to Cassius Clay versus Floyd Patterson boxing. 3 a.m., American time, 8 p.m. Just to, you know, I would tune my radio and listen to Radio Luxembourg. Mm -hmm. You know, David Kidd Jensen at 2 a.m. That's when the signals Shortwave were clearer. Radio. Yeah, I would listen to uh, Tunji Marquis. There you go. You know, there tops, you go. tops and pops. Talk about memory you know, lane. Then <laughs> at about 70s, I would listen to Kaleidoscope, Sami Jalana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. Uh, John Chuku. Wow. Uh, you know, uh, Ma Martin Soko. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. Fola Meadows. Fola Meadows, you know, you, you exactly. Down the line. Then by 1980, I went, I came to University of Lagos to do my MSc Mass Communication. And I was offered to do, uh, you know, Dawn Show on mm -hmm. Radio Nigeria 2. And I met, and I, Martin Street, you know, it was Radio Nigeria 2 was the only FM station at that time. It was called Sunshine Station. Yes, right. And I met Jones Usen, Willie Egbe, Jacob Akiyemi Johnson, um, uh, uh, Mama Funk, um, you know, Tony Begbuna, mm -hmm. Benson Donny mm -hmm. J. Mm -hmm. You know, that those days Benson Donny J was doing big beat. Yes. With Patrick Patrick O'K was doing pop around the world. Indeed. You the, know, the, this the, 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 and the of older course, viewers will be relating to this memory lane. But there are a lot of youngsters who are gonna be saying, now what are they going on about? But we're talking about the foundation of the stuff. Absolutely. Now, Professor I beg your pardon. I hear that Professor Ralph uh, Akifele uh, is on the line and he wants to you know come into the program. Good morning, Prof. Hello. Hi, Prof. You're on air right now with Dan Ladibako. Okay. Thank you. Hello, Yori. Hi. It's Yori that's, you know, hailing you. Uh, okay. I also have Dan Ladibako in front of me. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, congratulate you for this uh, big catch. Uh, Dan Ladibako <laughs> is uh, uh, an excellent uh, icon in, in broadcasting. Indeed. And we're so happy to have him as a graduate of... Uh, the former uh, Department of Mascom Unilag. Uh, you're a bit partial, uh, Prof. As a broadcaster, uh, I know that uh, there's a fine against these heat fishes. I want to know your viewpoint on whether the NBC should uh, increase the fine to punish all these uh, stations that we are uh, doing hate messages and as we move towards the 2019 elections. Mm. That's the first one. Second one is whether you like it or not, sir. IBB gave license for this deregulation policy 1992. Whether you like it, sir. Or Bass Major, under your directorship, gave license to campus radio stations. Now, whether you like it, sir. The last president, uh, Dr. Uh, Godwin, um, gave license. That is the good luck, good, good luck, Jonathan. Okay, Dr. Gave license good luck, Jonathan. To community radios and also uh, signed the Freedom of Information uh, Act to a bill, at least at the, at the eve of his departure. What's your advice for the current administration in terms of giving a landmark in, in broadcasting? Okay. Those are my two issues. Uh, uh, Congratulations, uh, uh, Ayori. 
Thank you very I much, uh, Professor. We are proud of you. Thank this you is, very, very kindly, life. Professor yes. Ralph uh, Atkin, Atkin Feleye. Um, are you asking um, a former DG to comment on issues that is really the purview of the incumbent DG? I don't know. Yeah. How does this sit with you, then, lady? Well, I mean, um, when you're a stakeholder and you're part of the Foundation Directors General, okay. you do not hesitate to give advice. Um, it takes a lot for you to have gone through from reporter, presenter, right of, I mean, when you think from 1973 till date, you know that I have a stake and I'm a stakeholder. Yes. And uh, I believe that um, we have gone through a progression. We went through a period when AIT and Ray Power had, what do you call it, a regulated monopoly? For about four years, Ray Power was the only one. We were testing the grounds. When I when President Obasanjo approved the first campus radio for instructional TV for Unilag, I pioneered it and I pushed it and I succeeded in getting it. And I think the whole business of even now that they've given community radio, there is always a period where you are in doubt as to how well it will sit. And you want to ensure that you don't make mistakes, especially the the media. Mm -hmm. If you give a license and you withdraw it later, mm. oh, they will scream, oh, media, oh, you're attacking the media, you're revoking, you are. So it's always preferable to err on the side of caution. And I think that's what government is doing. But I eventually believe that licenses will be given. And I think the acting president understands the, yeah, I mean, he mm. understands what all of this is all about. Mm. He knows that for whatever it's worth, the bandwidth is there, the frequencies are there, and in fact, the whole business of digitization, you can afford as many as 1,000 channels. Yeah, exactly. You can yeah. have multiplicity. Yeah. So the issue now is not whether the channels exist. The channels are there. So it's just for government to decide that we have it. Let me just sound a word of caution. One of the things that challenges I had in 1999 and 2000 was the number of stations you were going to give where are you going to get the personnel that yeah. can run it? Yeah. So we were careful in releasing licenses because all sorts of characters became presenters <laughs> on air. Even the ones <laughs> that had read their English in Yoruba and translator, <laughs> the ones that read it, they understood Hausa and translate to English on air. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it, 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 so that it won't become an all commas affair. Absolutely. Uh. So, I mean, it, that complex of how you get your content and the delivery of the content and the manpower. So it's got to be carefully managed. But I totally agree, Professor Rafa King Feleye, the time has come mm -hmm. for us to expand the channels, mm. give the universities their TV channels, give, listen, listen football clubs have TV channels. Yes. Football yes. clubs, exactly. even in South Africa. Mm. E football clubs. Mm. Eh? Uh, the, pro the professor wanted to know if you think uh, the fines imposed. Yeah, that was the second question. Yes. Um, as much as possible, there was a time where it was expedient that we are drastic about implementing and making sure laws are, obli you know, obligated and actually enforced. Yes, okay. But it comes a time. Yes, the NBC code. But it comes a time where there's some level of self responsibility and self-censorship mm. within the station. Actually, what I've always advised as DG of NBC at that time was every station must have a desk that regulates its own quality content. There must be a content regulation officer mm -hmm. that is the one that ensures that we don't even need to get to fines. Mm -hmm. Let mm -hmm. them make sure mm -hmm. that they do the Let right thing. Because Exactly. You know, be self because there would not have been any reason for you to have hate speeches. There would not have been any reason for Lion of Bodylon. There would not have been any reason for anybody to say that the pre so -so -so person is dead or somebody is dead. On, you know, because there would have been a quality control absolutely. seat. Absolutely. So even if a governor comes and says that so, -so, so person is on life support, you have to be cautious about what you allow yourself to transmit. Indeed. And one moment, please. Uh, 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 Reverend Dominic, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, Kipiore. Go right ahead, and you know I'm not a chief. It is it is my guest that is <laughs> Kogunan Sakoto. For, for the first time, for you, now, you have lighted our day this one to bring a better one, Dalla Dibako. That's right. This is the life of Dalla Dibako, Frank Olize, the doctor that used to present one, is dead now, left NTA. I've not watched NTA for a long time. That's mm. got me to, honestly. Mm. 
things that left NTA, and that comes to the line of Buddha. And NTA ever. is the source, so huh? you know NTA is the source. What? 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 But uh, it's some more at a sporting television, and TVC came on, on board and gave us the best broadcasting that we can see in CNN in the BBC. So there's no need to go into that. But let me say this. In all things, you have this money. I support what you said about Biafra. You know, I am from the South East. If we get this Biafra, there are just another challenge. Who is conducting the argument? Who is going to be the minister? Who is going to be the president? Is it this young boy who did not saw a civil war? Or the man who is championing it? Unfortunate. So again, what he says again we must take home is with torture. If we will torture Nigeria to one million times, this is what I saw in National Assembly yesterday, in the floor today, was a joke that was played out of this election. It's a sorry thing. So let me say this, because that is the case here. And we're informing Nigeria and the international community. You see the joke in National Assembly yesterday. How could an adult joke with such a sensitive matter to make somebody an active president yeah. in a nation like this, yeah. Nigeria? Yeah. yeah. And we say it in national television, yeah. we say it in red carpet, you're in that is the battle. He is supposed to be the heart of Edda. How could Edda dance this naked? Okay. All right. Thank, well, thank you. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you, Reverend, for calling in. Um, you probably can, well, uh, the Reverend said that he's entirely on all fours with your position on, on that. I, I, I believe that at some point we'll get to where government at the center will understand the need to devolve a little more powers naturally. It will come because we now realize that agriculture, education, some of those things that are on the executive we, it, 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 it's almost happening naturally now that people are beginning to find out that they have to now allow some level of freedom. And that freedom will begin to come because essentially <coughs> the constitution provides for true federalism. But it's the operators that manipulate. That's the problem. So we need to begin to ensure that people don't manipulate the federalism to suit their own purpose. Okay. And the moment we begin to do that, any, we need we need leaders that will be able to. We just we just might just be lucky one of these days. We'll work towards it. We need to work towards it. Find out the kind of people we elect as president, the kind of people we elect as governors. For now, the resource base of where we get our governors mm. and presidents mm -hmm. from. Sometimes I get very jealous of countries. In fact, the other day I was cracking a joke that why would Ghana produce Jerry Rollins? Atta Mills, Mahama, smooth guys, people who have, eh? why would, you know, and, you know, even the past Tanzanian, eh? Kikwe, Jekaya Kikwete, the pa immediate past Tanzanian president, quality guys, they know the stuff. But in Nigeria, the quality guys never get to the top okay. because you don't know how to play the game the rough way. <laughs> Let me bring in Victor at this point. Uh, Victor in Magodo, good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay, you got, uh, you got a question or comment? Yeah, well, um, first of all, I'd like to say happy to see Coconut. My name is Victor Okai. Oh, and, Victor, uh, hi. Oh, <laughs> uh, he's, he's one of us. Yeah, yeah. he's one of us. I'm so happy to see you. So happy to see you. Um, I want to say something. You know, uh, you, you talked about money right and the rest. What most people don't know is that you're probably one of the early fathers of Nollywood. You were one of the best directors in NCA, Second Church, so many of the programs. In fact, Brother Kabi 9 in those days was a mecca of sorts. Most of the early writers, um, most of the producers and directors came out from, from that Brother Kabi and you were at the head there. I want to commend you. And uh, I think the history of that particular industry will not be complete without mentioning your name. Mm. Good to see you again, and well done. Thank you very much for calling um, in, Victor. Uh, Victor is a producer. Yeah, um, uh, Victor, among many other things. Victor, Victor belongs oh, to mm. those that sweated on the corridors of NTA. Uh, if he had been a staff of NTA in Tuto, he would have be probably been a director by now. Mm -hmm. He worked tenaciously with Jimmy Ate, Peter Ego, Dauda Abari. He worked and he and was there. He was NTA there names. when he was there in 1985 when we did a writers' workshop. That writer's workshop that we did, we invited people to write. And 15 people out of those entries 
got the nod to form a group. Those 15 people included Zebejiro, uh, Bonde Merua, um, uh, Andy Amenechi, uh, and in fact, uh, uh, RMD. That's right. And Mahmoud Ali Balogun. All of them were discovered in 1985 with Victor. <laughs> Indeed. Victor, Lovely. thank you very much. Memory lane, no galore. Uh, Ishak in Joss. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Nkuyori. Thank you for calling uh, Good in. morning to your guest. Thank I'm you. Ishak Kaiwa, and I'm calling from Joss. I, I want to appreciate your guest. His tenor brought revolution in the Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation. More grease to the elbow. And the NT has produced several of his light, in the like of Yinka, Greg, Sadiq Gaba, Awa Baba, Ahmed, Abiba, Jima, Ijina Abu, Ruth Benemesa, Opia, Tokuba, Jai. So, we are too numerous to, mm -hmm. to, to, to name. Mm -hmm. And they, 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 so while we were growing up in the 80s, we were what? They, they also brought some fine programs to the audience, to the, the audience of Nigerians, the village master, the Kokura of Down. Who knew there was that were educated, unlike the <laughs> movies now that you, we have seen. There you go. We, we don't even like our children to watch nowadays. These, these are pro series that are educated. I want to advise that your life and some other journalists should emulate him and continue to ensure that what they broadcasting is what children mm. can watch and mm. so. And again, I want to say uh, on the issue of national unity, it is, it is important the Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation should be up and doing yeah. in the regulation, in, in, in playing its regulatory rule. You know, you know what happened in Rwanda? You, media are mm. very sensitive. Yeah. You can make or mar the unity of a country through the media or the other radio program or television program. I think the like, Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation should start prosecuting. I've never heard of yeah, that somebody has been prosecuted for Indeed. Well, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, as I said, it's all about memory. You've been talking about all of these on-air people um, that people know, and some of them are not on-air people, but people know. Uh, yeah. they, they, they know them because of the end credits. They know the people who are behind the programs. Uh, some of the orgas in NTA back in the day that uh, have been horribly, uh, well, tremendously is what I mean by horribly, tremendously uh, influential in, right? You, you have names like uh, James Audu, for instance, as director yes. of news. Remember that? He's Absolutely. the guy who gave me my break in television back Absolutely. in the day, we'll go back to the 80s. Absolutely. And then Yahya Abubakar, yes. another malam who was in Tegu. These were... Uh, Mohammed Ibrahim, Newsweek, yeah, yeah, John Chiahemen. John Chiahemen. Uh, these are names, yeah. man. Um, we used to be very, very rich in the past, though. Yes, true, true. You know, uh, to a large extent, let me... I think this is the time to let the viewer know who Yori Folari is. Oh, man. Yori, it's about Yori, the lady. Yori would walk around the <laughs> corridors, go to the newsroom, do his bulletin, work. We had a subculture where you get into that place at 8 o'clock, attend editorial meetings, come out, go and do your assignments, and by the time you finish editing and you're go going into the transmission room to go and submit your, your materials or go on air, you would not realize that it has rained three hours outside. You're in the studio. Right. You don't know that that's it has right. rained. That's right. When you come out and discover it's night. Th that, that still happens because now. Because of the passion. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's in your blood. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Yori, you did so well for NTA. Man. Uh, I felt a little worried when you left because I thought that you, you, you were part early. of the... Yes, I thought you were part of the generation. 80% of the reasons why the gentleman who called earlier said NTA was going down was because mm. the environment did not encourage people to stay. Mm -hmm. Because I gave you a simple example. I created programs. I wouldn't make... Uh, I wouldn't have the credits for those programs. I wouldn't have anything. And uh, for a large extent, around 85, 86, some mediocrity started creeping in. And by the time there was an exodus, the exodus <laughs> included people like Yori. But if you had been there, as I said, just like Victor, yeah. you probably would have been director news or even DG. Yeah, yeah. I have no doubt about it. Thank you very and much, you know, my brother. I, one, of my, kind of you. one of my talents is to be able to spot materials that can mm. grow. Mm. I know, and every guest I brought on Morning Ride and things I did, I had an ability, I do still have an ability to be able to pinpoint people who are committed trusted people who are hardworking, right. people who are 
you know, who have talent and passion. Very kind of you. Passion. Malam. Thank you very, very much, Malam. Um, uh, Bola in uh, Ebutemeta, thank you very much for holding on. Oh, did I leave it too late? I wanted Malam to end his uh, sentence. I'm so sorry, Bola, that um, I, I lost you there. Uh, you were talking about some of those iconic figures in the yeah. newsroom, you know, the, the, you know, the James Audu. Uh, you know, because that was the time, uh, he was the guy who coordinated the newsroom. Yeah. In fact, it was people, you, you weren't just the only one. Yeah. You weren't the only one. People like James Audu, yeah. they, in, they, 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 they brought the whole idea about you know what? I don't want any newscaster anymore. Uh, I don't want a newscaster. If you're a newscaster, you've got to be a reporter too. Absolutely. You've got to be a reporter newscaster. Understand That's where it all started story. from. When you understand your story in delivering, in delivering your story, you're part of that story. So you come and present the story. And that's what has happened. Christian and Po, Am and Po, yeah. everybody, yeah. you know, yeah. Ginny Moss, yes. Yes. everybody. These are reporters. Absolutely. Reporters and presenters. Absolutely. So they've mastered it. They know the subject. Today you have so many newscasters and they'll be reading a story and you know they've not even heard this name before. And a newscaster on network television, uh, is this Okokomaiko or is this <laughs> eh, uh, Olobo or know. is this so Kekere they, Eku? Yes. So and he's were, battling with it because they were not part of that production. So NTA led in that regard, yeah. you know, uh, producing so this extent. new genre of um, you know, uh, broadcast professional. And uh, Charles Enojo, thank you for holding on. Good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, sir. Kuyori. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Charles. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, Really, I'm very impressed with your program. Um, although when I was a child, I used to watch some of these programs from uh, Nigerian Broadcasting Corporation. And uh, then I've been hearing of uh, the name of uh, Dan Ladibako. And initially, I wanted to go into journalism. But due to some certain things in life, I couldn't go in for it. Okay. And uh, today, as I'm watching him, Speaking on uh, um, broadcasting issues, really, although it's late for me to come into that uh, calling, <laughs> it's speaking like uh, a gospel, a gospel preacher. Yeah. And he has really inspired me. I pray that the good Lord will continue to strengthen him. One thing again, I would like him to make the suggest or come up with is: Is it possible to institute? An institution that has to do with mass communication. All right, then. Uh, you know, no, so, sorry, I got to rush you, Charles. I, be, I beg your pardon. I've completely run out of time. Presenters are scared of doing what I just did. I don't have the time anymore. But we did get your gist, and also thank you very kindly for your compliments. We've run out of time, and I left it too late because I mean, I was enjoying myself myself. You know, so Kogunan uh, Sokoto, Dan Lady. Thank you very much for coming on our program. It's my pleasure, Yori. And again, as I said, I must commend TVC. Great job. They set in new heights, clean pictures, excellent sound. All your staff, I particularly enjoy India, Mugu, Ikechuku, uh, Ugochi, uh, Bukola. Uh, <laughs> a whole Mimo, horde of them. A whole, a whole army know, of those guys. You know, Thank you just, very, very much. You know, promise. We, we appreciate all of you. Them, but you, you must I promise to come again. You, we can't leave this for another 10 years. <laughs> you must promise to come again. I do promise. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you very, very much. My pleasure. Yeah. That's Dan Ladi uh, Nasir Bako, O-O-N, was our guest today, and indeed our pleasure. So that's our program. Um, Yori Folani. I'll see you then, God willing. Bye-bye for now.